I'm Jerry Agar for Ezra Levant. The Jerusalem Institute of Justice has a report entitled Hidden Injustices, a review of Palestinian and Hamas rights violations on the West Bank and Gaza. In other words, violence against Palestinians by Arabs. The Institute's Christopher Keel joins me. Christopher, welcome. How are you doing today, Jerry? Doing well. Good to have you. So I think, as you point out in the report, um, whatever Israel might be doing wrong is certainly watched considerably and reported extensively. But maybe perhaps people in Canada and the United States don't really think about the injustice against Arabs by Arabs going on in uh, Palestine. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. There is a uh, uh, this, this report that we've put together. It's been the, the fruit of about 18 months of work. And, and in it, what, we, what we have examined is the amount of aid that has gone into the Palestinian Authority since the Oslo Accords were signed in 1993. Uh, the amount of aid itself is right around $20 billion, which if you look at other, other amounts of aid that have been given to nations over time, this is 25 times the amount of aid that, is, that went to restore all of Europe after the Marshall Plan, um, after World War II. So you have the scenario where $20 billion of aid which is 25 times the amount, of, the amount of aid that went to all of Europe to restore Europe has gone to the Palestinian Authority over the last basically 14 years, and yet still the Palestinians are living in abject poverty and are suffering extreme human rights abuse at the hands of the Palestinian Authority. Well, yes, in fact, you talk about in the report how the first basic, most important human right is the right to live and, and go about your life, and that's not really guaranteed for Arabs at the hands of Arabs. Absolutely, that's correct. You know, unlike a lot of Western democracies, there is no, there's been no acceptance of basic, of basic human right law, international human right law. So essentially, Sharia law governs any kind of, it's, it's the main governance in, in, in the Palestinian Authority. So right now there is no, there is no accountability or oversight to, to the right of human life in, in, this, in the territories right now in, in this area, basically. So that's one of the main points that we were, we were focusing on in this report. Now, do you think then that the United States should withdraw support or just take advantage of uh, the one who pays the piper calls the tune, so to speak, and exert a little more pressure? You know, our, our report actually is not calling for aid to the, the territories end because there, there is a lot that needs to happen. But what we are saying is that oversight and mechanisms need to be put into, into place to ensure that this money is not just going to, you know, the private bank accounts of, of the regime leaders, or it's not going to fund education that's teaching children how to, to be suicide bombers instead of teaching them how to read or write or a skill. So we, we're not saying do, do not support pal the Palestinian territories with money, but what we are saying is that there need to be stronger mechanisms in place to make sure that this money is going to where it should be going to give the Palestinians a future and a hope. All right. So uh, one of the things also that struck me in your report is that you just told us it was 18 months of research and it was with uh, charitable organizations and people who are working in the territory, who uh, see a lot, they know a lot, yet you can't really say who they are. So they themselves are in danger. Absolutely. One of the, one of the main problems, I mean, if you look at the routine abuse, the arbitrary imprisonment, imprisonment with no due process. You know, I mean, human rights crimes from everything from death, honor killings to torture is happening here. So if these people were to speak out, they are absolutely in danger for their very lives. So a lot of the names, all the names in the report have been withheld for this very reason. Well, and journalists are in danger there, too. Absolutely. And a lot of nonprofits and, and you know, basically any kind of non-governmental organization that's working there to try to help, they also have extreme pressure on them to make sure that they don't speak out, speak out against these issues because it puts everything at risk, including, and, and most importantly, the actual lives of the people doing this work. I think there's not enough reporting on this, which makes uh, your report valuable. We'll see whether most of the media are willing to pick it up. But if the United States government does not exert pressure, if other governments do not exert pressure, uh, how do you expect change to happen? Well, and that's, that's one of the main, the main problems that you know, we're facing right now with, with everything that's happening here is that we... We're looking at way, different ways to, to bring change. And I mean, our organization's main focus is human rights. And that's not a, that's not a pro-Israel stance. That's, I mean, we want human rights for all. And so what, what we're calling for is just that the, right now we're doing more damage than good by providing money to the Palestinian territories. So if, if you're somebody who's very concerned about Palestinian rights or human rights as a whole, it's important that we exert pressure on you know, the channels of, of Western democracy that are giving aid and make sure that there is accountability and oversight to, to this area. Because right now what we're doing is we're fueling 
a regime that has no respect for human life, and that, that's fundamentally the problem. Well, um, I know that uh, my country, Canada, is very supportive of Israel. Um, the Prime Minister is supportive of Israel. The official position of the United States is support for Israel. Some in your country don't feel necessarily that your current president is as dedicated to that as he should be. But, uh, but that aside, the politics aside, do you think the media is dedicated enough? You know, I think that there's a, a lot of backlash against Israel and the media, and I think it's I think it's, and I, I, you know, we're not sure if it's because they don't realize what kind of treatment the Palestinians are under by the own, by, by the Palestinian Authority, their, their, their current government, or, you know, if this is a, a strategic decision by the media to, to try to push this forward. But I think ultimately, you know, what we're really trying to, to look at here is we, we really just want to, to show that they're, I don't know, our support for Israel, it's, it's not a, it's not a, a religious or a, a moral question as much as a, a rule of law question. As, as Western democracy, we have an obligation to support other nations that have a strong rule of law or a standard of law that, that protects human life. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is say, make, make, make foreign aid to the Palestinian you know, Authority contingent on, on this same value of life. Otherwise, it's doing more damage than it is, than it is good. I appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jerry.